I see Diogenes' inscriptions scattered around Oinoandra as a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. Burası yani bizim için çok değerli. Bu Oynanda antik kent 1973 yılından beri bizim aile tarafından korunmaktadır. Bulduğum yazıtları Martin Ferguson Smith'e gösterdiğim zaman işte o cebinden çıkarır, bana bir tane şeker verirdi, sevinirdi. O kendisini buraya adamış birisi. Smith'in bana vermiş olduğu şekeri e, yiyorum ve kabuğunu da bu ağaca asıyorum. Oynoanda çok yüksek bir yer. Biz yaklaşık 1400 metre de yükseklikte yiyoruz. Oynoanda e, Likia bölgesinde küsey kenarda kalıyor. Oynanda öğren yerinin diğer öğren yerlerine göre bir ayrıcalığı var. Bahsettiğimiz kitabeler. Biz bu Diyoşen Yasit tanıyoruz. His inscription is written in a way that it can be read by someone who has not studied philosophy. O çok e, ilginç bir şey çünkü antik dünyanın en büyük yazıt tahmin edebiliriz. Martin Smith estimates that it was large between 65 and 80 meters. Onun yükseklik yaklaşık 3 metre 60 santim tahmin edebiliriz. If Diogenes had lived today, he would undoubtedly have used the internet to propagate his message and it would have been a lot easier and cheaper than doing it the way he chose to do it. I made my first visit to Oinoanda uh, 43 years ago in 1968 and I came here making a kind of pilgrimage to see where this uh, extraordinary man Diogenes set up his, his uh, remarkable inscription. In the 19th century, French and then Austrian investigators had been here and found 88 pieces of the inscription. But then um, there had been no further work. There is no other philosophical inscription of this extent anywhere in the ancient world. There is some parallel in the east of China where there are the Buddhistic um, rock inscriptions of the 5th, 6th century AD in the landscape, but here obviously we are not in the landscape, but here we are in the town. In this town, a stoa, which was a public building, contained um, moral and philosophical advice. During my first days on the site in 1968, I rediscovered many of the pieces found in the 19th century, and then um, one day was having a picnic with a, a young uh, Turkish villager from Injialala. We came to this spot here and we sat down to have our lunch and I had been drinking from a, a bottle, um, a fizzy drink, and um, I needed to um, something which to take the cap, the metal cap off the top of the bottle, so I used the top of the stone which at that time was buried in the ground uh, up to that point. And I could see some very worn letters there. When I studied the text that had already been published, I realized it must be a new piece. So th this was the start of quite a, an interesting and an important story. Diyojen tanımıştım hani Büyük İskender'e gölge etme başka ihsan istemem diye rez çeken. Oynağında da başka bir Diyojen'le daha tanışmış oldum. Derdini koskoca bir duvara döken. 
Her iki Diyojen'i de pek sevdim ben. In 1884, among the first pieces which were found was this large stone which contains some hint to the building on which the inscription was written. I think it would be nice to read Martin Smith's translation of these lines. Having already reached the sunset of my life, being almost on the verge of departure from the world on account of old age, I wanted, before being overtaken to death, to compose a fine anthem to celebrate the fullness of pleasure, and so to help now those who are well constituted. Now, if only one person, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six people were sick, as he puts it, with false opinions, he would visit them individually and give them the best advice he could, but in fact, most people are, um, are sick with false, false opinions. And their number is increasing, for in mutual emulation they catch the disease from one another like sheep. And he sees himself as, uh, as a doctor, the idea that philosophy is, is a medicine for the mind, for the soul. This is very prominent in, in Epicurean philosophy. It is right to help also generations to come and well, because uh, they belong to us, though they are still unborn. And besides, love of humanity prompts us to aid also the foreigners who come here. He calls them all so-called foreigners because there's really no such thing as a foreigner because the whole world is one country for human beings. Bu bir ardı çağcı. Bu tarihi kentte bunlardan çok fazla var ama eteklerinde bunlardan yok. Eteklerinde genelde dağın eteklerinde pınar çok fazla. Cırık bunların tohumlarını yedikten sonra cırık kuşunun dışkılarını bu yere dökülüyor. Yerden baharın yani e, toprağın ısınmasıyla birlikte bunlar fidan haline gelerekten yeryüzüne çıkıyor. Yani cırık bunsuz olamıyor. Bu da cırıksız olamıyor. The inscription itself consisted in seven stone layers and this part here belongs to the lowest layer. It was a treatise on ethics and um, below there run a line with maxims of Epicurus. This is very important because these maxims of Epicurus were already known um, to the scholars and so from the missing parts we can deduce how large the inscription was. We know from the inscription, from what Diogenes tells us in the preface to his physics, which is also the preface to the whole inscription, that he had his um, inscription carved in a stoa, in a colonnade. But we do not know exactly where the stoa was, but we assume that it was on or very near the, the esplanade, which um, was the earlier marketplace or agora of the city in Hellenistic and early Roman period. Above, uh, there was another layer about 40 centimeters high, which contained a writing on physics. Epicurean physics is an atomistic physics. Um, that's very important because the model of physics in our days is still an atomistic uh, model. Then, as a third layer, there were letters of Diogenes and maxims written by Diogenes himself on single stones. There was a fourth layer which also contained letters partially by Diogenes, partially attributed to Epicurus, and other three layers contained 
one single writing on old age. Diogenes' inscription is, is an important part of the evidence for uh, Epicureanism flourishing in the, in the second century AD. Oynağında 2300 yıllık bir geçmişin izlerinden yola çıkarak hayatlarına dair tahminlerde bulunmaya çalışmak. Dağlar tepeler aşmak, gölgede soğuk terler döküp güneşte yanmak, anlayamadığımız yazılara uzun uzun bakmak ve hala anlayamamak, Diyojeni, Epikür'ü merak etmek, ardıç ağaçları arasında yürümek demek. The text here is part of an argument in Diogenes' physics treatise in which he refutes the theories of dreams propounded by philosophical opponents, specifically the Stoics, his favorite, the favorite opponents of the, of the Epicureans, who believed that um, dreams are empty figments of the imagination and the view of Democritus, who, in the opinion of the Epicureans, attached too much importance to dreams, regarding them as veridical. Well, here we see a ten-line column writing, which is presumably a letter of Epicurus to his mother. The situation is a very common situation. The son is studying somewhere abroad, and uh, the mother was obviously concerned about his income and uh, whether he lived well. Epicurus was in Athens, and his mother was not in Athens, and she had a dream, and her son appeared in the dream, and she believed this to be a bad sign. <laughs> and Epicurus explains that dreams are nothing bad and so on. He says that his life is improving from day to day and so his happiness is now a godlike, isotheon. And the Epicurean position was intermediate between those um, rival views. They uh, didn't think that dreams are veridical but at the same time they, they have um, a reality as is shown by the effect which they can have on human beings causing them, for example, if they have nightmares to sweat with fear or um, also there's mention here of erotic dreams causing the, the ejaculation of seamen. Martin simidi severiz. Eskiden beri gelir. Benim çocuklarım o cikandan beri. The villagers in Injialala were very friendly and hospitable and kind to me. Geldiğinde dağa gider, sabahı erken gelir. Asalarını bere bırakır. And when returned to the village, um, I was given innumerable cups of glasses of tea and um, Sometimes when I went up the hill, I was given hard-boiled eggs. Teşekkür ederim der, eline sağlık der. And when I came down, I was given flowers. And of course, I brought presents with me from from um, the United Kingdom. Bardak altı getirdi. Ee, ön kış tamalı getirdi yani şey. It was just a, a wonderful friendship. And um, I thought it only right to um, to dedicate my work uh, to, to the villagers. Here, our location is called Martin's Hill because Martin Smith in the 70s found many, many Diogenes blocks around here and one of the most interesting is this one. It tells us the Epicurean concept of uh, gods and um, Diogenes criticizes 
the traditional concepts of gods as we find it in Homer. So um, in Homer we have gods who are angry, who don't control their temper. Uh, you have in the Greek mythology gods who have to serve other people like uh, Hercules and Nemesis who is angry, uh, who is imagined by human beings as being angry. Diogenes is arguing principally against the Stoic view that the god or the gods created the world for the benefit of themselves and of human beings, to be um, a joint city of human beings and gods. And Diogenes throws scorn on this idea and uses various arguments to combat it, um, pointing out, among other things, to the imperfections of the world. And in this column, Diogenes states that uh, our ideas about gods and also the representations of gods, the uh, images of gods, should uh, be friendly and uh, they should smile so that when we see them, we don't um, have fear, but we also smile. If we speak about someone who enjoys his, his life, uh, people normally think about uh, those who are drinking and uh, um, whatsoever. But certainly this is a short pleasure and uh, the day after is not always uh, um, equally pleasant. So the Epicurean hedonism, which is the uh, science of pleasure, we can call uh, hedonism a sort of science of pleasure, um, analyzes the pleasures uh, in a more rational way. The Epicureans distinguished the, the pleasures of movement, kinetic pleasures, from the pleasures of rest, the, the static pleasures, which are, are more lasting and worthwhile, they're not as intense. The Epicurean philosophy believes that the soul, after our death, is dissolved so that we don't have any more feelings after our death and there uh, is no paradise and no afterlife. So it is important that we um, do things right in our life because the, the life is the only criterion for our happiness. There were others in the ancient world who believed that pleasure is the highest good, notably the Cyrenaic school who followed Aristippus of Cyrene and they believed um, in the value of kinetic pleasures. The idea was that you should take as much, <laughs> as much pleasure as, as, you, as you could. Um, um, I don't say entirely regardless of the effects, but um, there was a sharp difference of opinion between the Cyrenaics and the Epicureans. But many um, critics of Epicureanism in the ancient world um, didn't understand the Epicurean position um, properly and accused the Epicureans of being um, only concerned with the pleasures of the stomach. That is totally, totally unjust. Diogenes writes that we just need a bit of bread, we need a place where to lay down, uh, but um, it should just be um, of a nature that we don't feel pain afterwards. And we need some clothing, but um, um, it can be simple, it should, uh, just should not scratch us. Bodily pleasure consists in freedom from pain, aponia, and mental pleasure is ataraxia, freedom from disturbance. Hakikati isterseniz devasa bir taş kütlesine kazıyın, 
sonuçta yine anlayanı çıkmayacak, toprağa karışacak ve yine anlaşılmayı bekleyecektir. İnsanlar hakikati araştırmak yerine boş inançlarla meşgul oldukça, yıkıntılar arasında dolanmayı, hakikat harabeye dönmeden önce aslında nasıl bir şeydi diye merakla ve hayıflanarak sorular sormayı kaderimiz olarak benimsemeliyiz. When I was younger, I shared the view that um, Epicureanism might perhaps become something popular in, um, in today's world. I'm more cynical about that now, I think. But um, it was a philosophy, which was also a way of life, which um, people embraced um, over um, seven centuries. Um, three centuries BC and four centuries AD and uh, it worked for them there's no reason why it shouldn't um, work for us really. The core of Epicurean philosophy is that we have to pay attention to our life which is happening now and uh, to think about uh, the present times not to worry too much about the future and um, to enjoy the uh, records of the past Epicureanism was, in the ancient world, a society of friends. Friendship was at the heart of Epicurean philosophy. So much so that Epicurus called friendship an immortal good, and by that he meant something more than ordinary human friendship, but the friendship and fellowship of human beings who share the same ideals and the same philosophy. Uh, Epicureans differed from other philosophical schools. Epicurus, when he founded his uh, school in Athens, he did not f uh, found it um, in a large stoa, as the Stoics did, or on, uh, in a gymnasium, as Plato and Aristotle did, but he bought a garden, and in this garden there was a house, and. Um, Everyone lived together, also women lived in this community. Epicurus himself had women in his school. He was the first Greek philosopher to admit them. And uh, they shared everything, and we are told that at a moment uh, in which Athens was in difficulties, Epicurus gave the matters to survive for hundreds of people. Anadolu'da insanların dileklerinin gerçekleşmesi için ağaçlara bir şeyler bağlamaları bir gelenektir. Ancak bu bir dilek ağacı değil. Çünkü Epikurosçulara göre doğaüstü güçler günlük yaşamla doğrudan ilgilenmezler. Ancak yine de dileklerimiz ve isteklerimiz bir başka açıdan önemlidir. Epikuros şöyle der. İsteklerimizin bazıları doğadan gelir, bazıları ise boştur. İstekleri yanılmadan incelersek bedenin ve ruhun sükunu için neye çalışmak, ve neden kaçınmak gerektiğini öğreniriz. Çünkü ancak bunların ikisi birden mutlu bir hayatı meydana getirirler. Burada bir kazı evinin eğer bu olamayacaksa bu eserlerin muhafaza edileceği güvenli bir mekanın oluşturması gerekiyordu. Bugünkü yüzey araştırma ekibiyle görüştük. Kazı deposu dediğimiz metalden yapılmış ancak standartları ve e, yapım koşulları çok iyi olan bugünkü depo ortaya çıkartıldı. Ve ayrıca oradaki görevli personelimizin de kötü hava koşullarında kendisini sığınabileceği bir, bir mekan oldu ayrıca. The only scientific excavation to have been held at Oinoanda was in 1997. We um, excavated at three points on the Esplanade. The small excavation we had here was, was very successful, but very limited. 
It would be good to excavate all along the line here. Mi malik yasit arasundaki ilish keliri birastaha aitin latmak istiyorum. Gerçi doğal yapısı itibariyle orada kazı yapmak çok kolay bir şey değil yani ekonomik açıdan ulaşım açısından. Ama bir kazı yapıldığı zaman zannediyorum ki oynanan da öğren yerinin geçmişiyle ilgili tüm unsurların hala orada olduğuna ben inanıyorum. Büyük bir kazı tabii öyle bir öğren yeri tamamen değiştiriyor. Mesela bütün eski ağaçlar kesmesi lazım. Demek bu hiç elememiş doğal yer çok değişiyor. Onun için biraz şüpheliyim. Belki küçük sonda ağaçlar bize gayet iyi bir sonuç verebilir. Diogenes'in inscription is not um, the only important thing at Oinoanda. We would like to um, find out much more about this area, which was very important in the Hellenistic and early Roman period. Bis die Bilius Epigraf Usmanla için bu gerçekten bir Eldorado, bir çok zengin bir yer. Bu Diogen yazıt var, bir Demosthenia yazıt var, ondan sonra üçüncü önemli yazıt var, Lucinia Flavilla'nın mausoleum üzerinde yazmış yazıtlar. bana güzel bir bina keşfetme şansı verdi ve geleceğe ilişkin yeni bakış açıları bulmak konusunda umut veriyor. If Diogenes were alive today, he would make exactly the same comments about contemporary society as he made about his own. Most people have false opinions. Look at wealthy people, look at powerful people in the world, politicians, so on. They don't they don't really have happy lives. Diogenes would have given them the same advice uh, as he gave his contemporaries. Um, limit your desires, live a quiet life, study philosophy, of course, and cultivate, cultivate friendship. I was working on the um, hill some way away over there and my uh, young Turkish villager friend came back saying Martin Bey, yeni taşla buldum and uh, when he brought me down the uh, slope here I thought it can't be Diogenes because no Diogenes pieces have been found in this part of the site. As I said I was feeling rather ill when I came into this doorway, I could not believe my eyes. Six new fragments in one place. It was just extraordinary. Of course, on the one hand, I was very pleased. Uh, on the other hand, I was really rather ill. And um, I thought, uh, how on earth am I going to um, record all these? So I had to uh, photograph them, uh, make squeezes, and copy them, and draw them. But it was all very exciting. And this I think is the single most important find that um, I've been involved in on this site. And whenever I come down this place, I kiss this stone. Because I love Diogenes, and I love the work here of the place, and um, this is so important. Ağaçtaki kağıtları taşıyan bu kırmızı klasörü bir yapboz gibi görüyorum şimdi. Ve kendimi ardıç ağacındaki şifreleri aktaran bir ardıç kuşu gibi hissediyorum.